let's delve into the story of film The Tai Chi Master. 2022. The story begins with a grand display of military might, where the Dai Nation's prince leads a vast army to besiege the Southern Song Dynasty's city. Their approach is rather unique, using catapults to launch soldiers into the city, which enables them to open the city gates for the rest of their troops. The Song Dynasty's general Wei Lin Chuan and his forces try to resist but are quickly overwhelmed by the sheer numbers of the Dai army. At this crucial moment, a man named Zhang Jun Bao steps in, demonstrating his exceptional martial skills against the Dai tribes. He is aided by a young warrior from his Wuji sect, Shi Mei, who also proves to be a formidable combat. With their assistance, the tide of battle begins to turn in favor of the Song dynasty. Amid the ongoing conflict, a female warrior from the Di tribe engages in a duel with General Chuan. Just as she appears to have the upper hand, Jun Bao intervenes. However, the warrior suddenly withdraws, revealing her true mission, was to obtain a specific item. She quickly delivers this item, a key, to the Dai tribe's prince. This key is essential for unsealing the demon sect master. As they celebrate their apparent victory, a powerful arrow from the Song dynasty narrowly misses Prince Dai and strikes their flag instead. The female warrior advises the prince to retreat as they have achieved their objective. The prince complies, ordering a swift retreat for his troops. In the chaos, Shimei is abducted by two enemy soldiers and Jun Bao gives chase into the Forbidden Insect Valley. Inside the valley, the pursuing soldiers encounter strange occurrences. Their horses halt in fear, and the ground gives way beneath them, leading to the demise of one of the soldiers at the hands of a giant silkworm. It lunges at Shi Mei, but Jun Bao arrives in time to rescue her. As he prepares to confront the massive creature, a mysterious woman named Yue Er appears and calms the silkworm with a flute. Initially mistaking Jun Bao for a D-tribe member, she soon understands his intentions and warns them to stay away from the forbidden area. Meanwhile, General Chuan seeks reinforcements from a city official, but is met with indifference and dismissed concern. Frustrated and helpless, he leaves, burdened with the weight of protecting his nation. Later, Jun Bao returns and invites General Chuan for a drink, revealing their childhood friendship. Despite recognizing Jun Bao's martial skills, General Chuan tries to persuade him to fight for the country. Jun Bao, however, maintains that saving the nation is the general's duty while he prefers a simple life of eating, drinking, and making pills of immortality. In the subsequent scene, Jun Bao visits an elderly man imprisoned for 12 years, who happens to be a formidable adversary of the Wuji sect, and the one prince D aims to release, Kui Tian Xing, the master of the Damon sect. Jun Bao regularly visits him, offering wine in exchange for knowledge of the Damon sect's martial techniques. Despite the Wuji sect's prohibition on learning these skills, Jun Bao remains undeterred. With the sect leader selection day approaching, he plans to master these techniques and defeat the other candidates. The story then fast forwards to the selection day, where a candidate named Man Feng excels, defeating one opponent after another. Just as Man Feng is about to secure victory, Jun Bao intervenes and challenges him using the frowny Dupont de Mon sex techniques ultimately defeating Man Feng. However, this action earns the disapproval of the crowd and a stern warning from the sex master. Jun Bao firmly defends his stance, emphasizing that martial arts techniques themselves aren't inherently good or evil. What truly matters is the intent of the practitioner. This argument abruptly halts the competition, and as everyone exits the room, Jun Bao is startled to discover that the key to the prison has mysteriously vanished. This deeply concerns him, prompting a swift departure from the scene. Simultaneously, at the headquarters of the Daemon sect, Yue Er, the daughter of Tian Xing, becomes infuriated upon discovering that her fellow sect members have been covertly collaborating with the D tribe. They are surreptitiously bolstering their forces to prepare for an attack on their rival, the Eight Sect. Shortly after, Prince D approaches, seeking cooperation to annihilate the Wuji sect in exchange for the key to release her father. In response, Yue Er staunchly refuses their proposal, infuriating the prince. Consequently, one of his henchmen strikes her with a potent blow, causing severe injuries. She's informed that the poison she's been inflicted with may prove fatal within three days. Despite her critical condition, none of her fellow sect members dare to come to her aid. Realizing her vulnerability, 
she escapes the situation. The following day, Jun Bao leisurely wanders through the forest when the enormous silkworm unexpectedly appears, seizes his wine bottle, and ambles away. While searching for his bottle, Jun Bao encounters the injured Yue Er, who leans against a bamboo tree, suffering the effects of the poison spreading through her body. Fortunately, Jun Bao possesses his immortality pills, which he administers to her. Using a bamboo stick, he successfully extracts the poison from her body, and his treatment proves effective as the scar on her body swiftly vanishes. In the evening, the combined forces of the Dai tribe and the demon sect launch an assault on the Wuji sect headquarters. Sadly, no one is capable of resisting the intruders, allowing them to easily achieve their goal of releasing Tianxing. Once the demon sect master is freed, he effortlessly eliminates all the Wuji sect members. Meanwhile, Jun Bao practices some martial techniques while waiting for Yue Er to regain consciousness. When she finally awakens, she expresses her gratitude to him. She inquires about how she can repay him, and Jun Bao playfully suggests a drink. Their conversation is abruptly interrupted by the sudden arrival of Shi Mei, who informs them about the attack on their base. Alarmed, they hasten to the base, only to find that all the sect members have perished. At this moment, Tian Xing and his followers appear, instructing them to meet their master in the prison. The female warrior from the Dai tribe then returns the key to Jun Bao before their departure. Later, Jun Bao and Shi Mei hastily make their way to the prison, where they find their master on the brink of death. He entrusts Jun Bao with the League Master Token, explaining that they are the last remaining heirs of the Wuji sect. He also imparts a message, urging them to uphold righteousness in their lives before peacefully passing away. Days pass, but Jun Bao struggles to overcome the tragic event and blames himself for the ordeal. One night, while Yue Er plays her flute in the forest, her father approaches her. He urges her to return to the sect with him, but she declines. She discloses the sect's alliance with the Dai tribe and her suspicion that they aim to utilize her father's power for martial realm conquest. Nevertheless, Tian Xing seems unmoved. It is revealed that he harbors a deep grudge against the entire kingdom, particularly the Eight Sect, which had sought to vanquish the Demon Sect in the past. During that time, his wife sacrificed herself to protect Yue Er. Following this revelation, Tian Xing returns to the Demon Sect headquarters where he punishes the sect members for their alliance with the D tribe, which endangered his daughter's life. However, his speech is abruptly interrupted by the arrival of a Dai tribe representative with a mask, who proposes a collaboration to eliminate the Eight Sect. Tian Xing firmly declines any cooperation and insists on pursuing his vengeance independently. The representative counters, sitting a deb he owes them, making refusal difficult for Tian Xing to consider. In a fit of anger, Tian Xing hurls a sword at the representative, but the masked man displays astonishing power, easily bending the weapon. In the subsequent scene, Jun Bao approaches the eight sects, seeking an alliance to confront the Dai tribe. As he greets the sect members, an eerie silence hangs in the air. Suddenly, a powerful gust of wind sweeps through, causing the sect members to tumble. Shockingly, all eight sect members have fallen victim to Tian Xing's lethal actions. A few moments later, the demon sect master confronts Jun Bao, his anger driving him to attack Tian Xing, triggering an intense battle. However, he quickly finds himself overmatched by his immensely powerful adversary. Just as Jun Bao is on the verge of defeat, Yue Er intervenes, revealing to her father that Jun Bao had previously saved her life. This revelation prompts Tian Xing to spare Jun Bao. However, their path is blocked once more by the same masked man, resulting in another confrontation between Tian Xing and the masked figure. After a brief struggle, the demon sect master begins to falter in the battle, prompting Jun Bao to step in and defend him. Amid the ongoing combat, Jun Bao manages to unmask the mysterious figure revealing him to be none other than General Chuan. It is unveiled that General Chuan was responsible for stealing the key and collaborating with the D.I. tribe, a decision driven by his frustration with corrupt officials. Despite this revelation, General Chuan extends an offer to Jun Bao, inviting him to become his partner in world conquest. However, Jun Bao remains steadfast in his principles and rejects the offer. In response, General Chuan moves forward to eliminate him, 
but simultaneously she may intervenes. They engage in a heated battle, but the formidable general eventually prevails, poisoning she may. Recognizing their inability to overpower the general, Tian Xing summons the giant silkworm to carry away Jun Bao, she may, and his daughter. With the last of his strength, he buys them time to escape, but tragically falls victim to the general's lethal prowess. Meanwhile, the giant silkworm transports the group to a forest where she may succumbs to the poison. This deeply affects Jun Bao, and he once again places the blame on himself. The following day, he is unexpectedly ambushed by two members of the demon sect. They unleash a ruthless attack on him until he loses consciousness and falls into a nearby lake. While facing the threat of drowning, Jun Bao reflects on the teachings imparted by the sect leaders, Yue Er, Tian Xing, and General Chuan. These recollections of memories motivate him to persevere for goodness. While submerged in water, a couple of fish surround him, allowing him to refine his martial arts skills. Over time, he attains mastery over his techniques underwater. Empowered with these newfound Tai Chi skills, Jun Bao easily overcomes the two adversaries, emerging victorious. Meanwhile, at the D-Tribe headquarters, Prince D commends General Chuan for successfully vanquishing the Eight Sect. He then outlines his plan to launch an attack on the Central Plains the following day and appoints General Chuan as the chief military commander. However, General Chuan has other intentions and decides to sever his ties with the prince. Subsequently, he eliminates each D-Tribe member one by one. As he pursues the prince, Yue Air er intervenes and enters into a fierce battle with General Chuan. Shortly after, Jun Bao arrives and implores his childhood friend to choose the path of righteousness. However, General Chuan, having endured numerous betrayals in the world, rejects the offer, leading to a heated duel between them. As the battle escalates, the giant silkworm comes to the aid of Yue Air er and Jun Bao. The creature spews white silk balls from its mouth, ensnaring both men in its strands. General Chuan is astonished by the incredible power of the silkworm and proceeds to tear through the silk ball. He climbs atop the creature and extracts its heart, believing that consuming it will further augment his strength. However, a large rock suddenly falls from above, striking both Jun Bao and General Chuan, rendering them unconscious for a brief moment. Upon regaining consciousness, they resume their fierce battle until General Chuan succumbs to the poison from the silkworm's heart, ultimately leading to his demise. In the final scene, we witness Jun Bao and Yue Er parting ways forever. Yue Er embarks on a quest to find a tranquil place, free from conflict, while Jun Bao decides to embrace the present moment leaving the past behind and making the most of whatever life may bring his way.